Greetings and salutations once again fellow gamers, Lukey P here and time for another episode of Let's Play Supreme Ruler Ultimate and um, we are back uh, with Brazil, uh, you'll notice that the time has moved on from uh, where we left the last episode. Uh, we got on about six months. We left it just as 1941 was about to end. And we're now approaching June of 1942. Um, so what has happened? Um, well, we've continued um, building our military capabilities. So um, let's have a look at our uh, production ability. So we've now got three, um, three naval factories and um we've switched to building we've built some subs we're now building um some pretty basic uh kind of escort destroyer type ships uh, mainly just to sink enemy subs if there are any um you know these aren't going to be long-term investments but they will they will do for now uh we've now got five um aircraft facilities We've bought some more unit designs, so we are currently in the process of building uh, some of these, which we bought from the UK, which are like scout planes that help you see where the enemy forces are. And then we're going to crack on and build a bunch of these, which we also built, uh, bought from the UK. Um, pretty, I mean, they're pretty rubbish stat fighters, to be honest, but they... Um, they are what they are at this stage of the game. Anyone who's played, you know, future, you know, future scenarios with any of the big countries will know that um, a a hit of two on enemy aircrafts and aeroplanes is not anything particularly impressive. Um, but nevertheless, um, we get them for completeness. And our army, well, it's still um, ticking along, building stuff. Um, we have built a base up here um, where a whole bunch of units are currently um, sitting uh, in reserve. If I just click that one there, um, so it only shows me reserve units at that location. Okay. Well, that's not quite how I thought it worked, but. Um, Hmm, that's interesting. I thought when you clicked a particular unit, it would only show you units in reserve at that location. So, um, let's try it one more time. Nope. Okay, well, um, anyway, we've basically deployed a bunch of units up to here who are currently in reserve, and they may hit Columbia. Um, but actually relations have deteriorated quite a lot uh, with Paraguay. There's a chance they may attack us, um, which is why down here um, I've put a barracks kind of on the border and um, there's already an air base there. We may end up um, deploying our forces to hit Paraguay first. I wouldn't expect it to be a long war if you compare 4,000, same as last time we looked at that at the end of last episode. With that, um, we should smash them. They haven't even got a build capacity. It would be hilarious if they attacked us with no build capacity. Um, so that's that. Um, and actually these three uh, these three land production down here, I specifically clicked on that tile, on that hex rather, and had them build a bunch of units because they are now building duplicate units in effect, which are going to go to the uh, the front with uh, Paraguay. Uh, what else has happened? Well, we've done a bit of research, um, which is good. Um, we developed anything particularly useful since last time I don't think so but we're getting 
we're slowly starting to catch up. So tank production, improve, tank design improvements, 1934 is on the horizon. That will put um, conventional automobiles and then modern highways within uh, reach. Uh, yeah, so we're slowly catching up on tech. Um, probably once we've conquered a few more countries, uh, things will happen even further. Uh, in terms of building more research. What else has happened on the world stage? Well, Germany continues to carve its way into the USSR. Um, the German Empire is now vast at 404 million. Um, uh, I'm starting to question if they aren't, I think they may well win World War II in this scenario, Germany. Um, and over here, um, yeah. Where's Mexico? Well, it didn't exist anymore because the US steamrolled it in about half a month. <laughs> um, yeah, so the US have started their their march into Central America. Um, remains to be seen where they stop. Um, could be slightly concerning for us. So we want to try and as soon as possible basically take over South America. Um, so yeah, what else has happened? Um, oh, we've been executing some really great profitable trades actually. Um, the margins have continued. I know, you know, looking at previous episodes, I think I titled one, how to make huge profits from trading. And I bet you a lot of people have looked at that and thought, oh, well, he's, he's trading a hundred million and getting 200 million back. That's not much. You've got to remember when you're playing later on scenarios you've had 50 60 years of inflation um and countries have a lot more money um so we're still uh, these were a few i wanted to show so we um that's another there you go so that is with china we tra traded 244 million of goods double that would be 488 million and we got 522 million. So we're selling at over 100% profit margin to China. And that's probably gonna continue because China are, you know, they swallowed Japan and I think that's now starting to benefit them. Um, they also have gone to war with both Italy and Vichy France. Um, so uh, they also want more of our oil now um, a lot of the time. Um, yeah, so they've come in and done that. That would have been an auto trade rather than one I've done because I would have sold it to them for a bit more. Um, but there was a really cool, from my point of view, trade with Germany. Um, I've resigned myself to the fact that actually not trading with Germany does very little other than penalise me. They're, the, they're pretty much the largest country in the world now. Um, so I did a pretty cool series of trades with them, which is cool to look at. I think it's brilliant from my perspective anyway. So um, this is the kind of thing which makes this game fun for me. It's a bit dry than some of the warfare aspects, but it's it's quite good fun. So basically I offered I offered to buy 2.5 billion worth of industry goods, so almost all of their industry goods for 2.2 billion. So that obviously took a fair chunk of our money out. What it did do is it gave Germany a load of cash and made them more willing to spend. So straight away over the next two days, I sold them 500 million of consumer goods for 1.1 billion. So 100% profit margin on that and a large trade as well, um, which can happen as, as people get more money. And the reason we were doing small units of 100 million of consumer goods for 200 million of money back is just because people don't have as much money in the early game. Um, but here, big trade. 500 million for uh, 1.1 billion back and then we sell pretty much all of our oil so we sold 400 million worth of oil for nearly 900 million worth of money so that's um that's like 125 percent markup and that is because germany had a load of money because somebody had just paid them what 2.1 billion that's how i'm being me and we took pretty much two billion of that straight back off them uh, for stuff we already had and we've got an even bigger 
stockpile of industrial goods now up to 5.7 billion billion no 5.7 million <laughs> 5.7 billion of industrial goods would probably do us for the rest of the game i think um so um yeah and our, our cost of production is now below the market price um that's probably our economy yeah it's kind of been bouncing around i did i did get below 20 percent for a time and then i um decided to build another naval plant which is like 800 million uh built another supply base up there i was just looking around and noticed that these were like you know 25 percent supply so they're now up to 85 percent um so yeah that's what's been going on um and we're getting to the point where i'm going to be looking for what if any um land uh, warfare infantry do i want to trade for so germany have got marines who so these are great for close quarters combat they really are i mean if you look at them the mechanized infantry has like six close quarters these have got 15 the problem is getting them to close quarters um it's not easy we may build some and take try and take bits of paraguay with them but um if not big, so that's six five six, which is no real difference from um, no real difference from the um, mounted infantry we've already got. Sorry, I got a bit distracted there because I just realised how powerful these motorised engineers are. Um, but they need five hundred and forty personnel, and they take. Um, 60 days to build so let's have a look at what our options are construction wise at the moment so we've got the motorized Pyrenees who are also good and take 60 days to build or we've got the mounted infantry who require maybe three fifths of the people uh, and can be built in 14 days rather than 60 so we'll probably mass produce mounted infantry at the moment as things stand but let's see what other units of or other countries have got so yeah oh, we're going to have to click a long way over to see what the USSR have got now um, Yeah, I think everyone's pretty much still using mounted infantry. Let's see what the UK have got. The UK have got a Bren carrier. Which is 27 days, 8, 4 and 6. That might not be a bad thing to have actually. The only thing is, is that is, um, I do wonder if that can actually, is that an actual carrier? Uh, let's buy that anyway. We're off for it. it. Gives us another option. It's only 2 million, which is, uh, child's play in this economy they've got motorized engineers as well is there anyone else in the world who might have I guess the US no they're running off them they're running off that as well let's just see if we can buy marines from The UK, so that's 486 people. Just have a look at the personnel ratings of them each. Okay, it's probably pretty much the same. Um, yep. Yeah. What I might do, so once I've bought 
these. I will just go through because I don't think I've been through before. Um, what some of the stats are. So you can get stats a bit easier on your own um, units. So let's go and look at some of them. Let's just look at that. Um, so this tells you the class, the number of people, the rough weight, default strength, cargo capacity if it can carry anything. That's your strength, your fuel, the supplies you can carry. If you've got any missile capacity, profile, I think that's how easy it is to hit. That's how far away you can see. Precision spotting, combat time. That's how far it can go. That's the speed it goes at. Um, that's if it can carry things. So that's more for a... Uh, a, a carrier at sea fortification attack soft attack hard attack close attack um, I think those are all kind of self explanatory I mean that's if you're attacking a building in town that's if you're close quarters combat which you do tend to get in towns that's generally it. it's called soft attack because generally it's people and hard attack is, is your armour close air attack um, mid-air attack so basically you can't really hit mid-air or high air attacks with these units uh, surface attack so if you're within five kilometers of a unit on the coast you can potentially hit it a bit but it's not going to be that much that's your defense that's your ground defense that's your air defense and that is your indirect defense indirect fire is um basically like ballistic uh, it's artillery pretty much and then this is just kind of self-explanatory price days to build which goods you need to build it annual maintenance your own required year generally gives you an idea of how advanced the unit is generally the more uh, the later it was in, is in years the better it will be and a lot of these stats will grow up uh, go up rather so this tells you a bit about the unit so this is saying it's a soft target so if an enemy was attacking us the computer would be looking at that game, uh, that uh, statistic there, because they're attacking a soft target. This tells us the unit's amphibious and it can bridge, which is because it's an engineer unit. That tells us it can demolish and that it's an engineer unit. Um, so if I compare it, for example, with mounted infantry, so you'll see they are a soft target. They don't have any of the bridging abilities because they're not, um, uh, they're not engineers. It's got a bigger range, because um, I think it carries more fuel from memory. Um, it's got slightly more combat time. It travels about the same speed. These stats aren't as good. Um, and it's not quite as good at um, defensive, but it's buildable a lot quicker. So if you think about comparing it, you could build four of these in the time it takes to build one of um, the motorized engineers. Um, and the personnel is, is a bit less um, so that is that is the unit stats screen um, so let's play on for a few minutes um, and you'll see our money's gone up massively this is just a function of loads of people are coming in trying to there we are we got the brain carrier and the Marines, I'm just going to have a look at the brain carrier because I'm interested if it's just called a carrier. Yeah, it is. It can't actually. Because what would have been really cool is to um, load it up with Marines, drive it into a town and let the Marines out and go nuts. Um, what I might just do is I'm going to... Um, Can I build land production there? No. Shame. Um, oh, I can put uh, hydro there at some point in the future, maybe. I was just going to try and see. There's an air base already. It'd be good to build air production there, maybe later on. I'm just thinking about uh, we'll probably build actually down here 
I was thinking about building some land fabrication there and just building marines so that if Paraguay do try and sucker punch us and have a few units, I could just get the marines out. What I think i will do is, that's got three land production. I'm going to tell them to build um, six marines when they get to it. And then we will slowly, so they move slowly, but we've got plenty of time to have them amble down to there because we're not planning on declaring war on Paraguay anytime soon. Um, so those will be built at that specific location. And then I'm basically just going to build a load of these. I didn't know you could do that. I was trying to see if I could, um, you know, build 10 at once by holding shift, which is a traditional way. You can just tell them to continuously produce new units. Um, I don't like to do that because sometimes I kind of forget it's on and it can be all right, but um, let's just build like loads of them, 50 a do. specifically to go and deal with Paraguay on the off chance they've got any tanks. We've got our first interceptor up there, so let's go and pick them up to there. And um, we've also been building some roads in the north of the country. Um, it was taking an age for folks to um, get up to there. And so we've started building roads. Units keep getting stuck in this kind of dead zone here. So we're building a road across there. That's kind of whacked up our inflation and our build costs a lot because we're spending, we're only spending nine million now. Um, but we were building, you can see there's a lot more roads going kind of south um, across the country. I'm just trying to think where we want to, um, build our next lot of land fabrication I think maybe we do want to build a couple there actually let's um so we had our motorized engineers who we stuck down build two because we had three slots but we need to put a barracks there um, for uh, to enable land production so uh, here with construction so that's going to put our inflation up again but hey ho we do a bit of trading now actually yeah, no, our consumer goods aren't as, as high as they were, which I think is because um, I'm selling a, a fair chunk through trade deals now. Germany want to pay us roughly 100% profit margin on oil, so we'll accept that. You guys can go to reserves artillery you can go down there um, my scout plane Let's send that up there finish helping build the road there so go up a bit more and this is just assisting building the road across the north of Brazil so we can switch from 
the Venezuelan front to the Colombian front. I think though Venezuela are on excellent terms with us, so I doubt we're going to be invading them soon. I do think actually there's an increasingly good chance it's going to be... Um, it is going to be Paraguay we hit first. Right, research breakthrough. Six projects and a possible capacity of seven. So let's see what else we want to look at. So we've got large bomber airframes. It's going to take a little while. Look and see if there's something which is quickish. Um, Well, that would be good except we need all we need all this first to get the um okay large bomber airframes see this I mean that's that would be brilliant to get but um metal alloy airframes I mean that's um what that does is that no um or tank improvements it's going to take a fair while improve sub construction I don't think we're going to be in a decent sea war for a while yet Turbo jets and our military vessels. And basic helicopters. Be nice to get some transport helicopters, like I say, airlifting in marines would be. Um, quite good, but I don't think we're gonna get that for any time soon. Um, so it's a bit of a question mark as to what we want to do here because there's nothing jumping out as the one which um, which helps us most immediately. Um, I think given we're looking at war, I think um, tank production, we get started on that. see our whereas before in our earlier days you know that never really changed I mean it still jumps up but you see it decreasing because we've now got military out and about moving using oil um, which is a change from when we first started the game and we basically the f I think the first thing I did was put all my military into reserves um, okay we've got a bunch of offers so Italy want to buy oil Okay, well we'll do that because Italy were on good terms with them. Consumer goods and they're offering to buy them at about 55% markup. We'll do that. Um, they're offering us 133% markup roughly, so we'll accept that. You notice they're not on very good terms with us at all, Peru, because they're one of the countries we are provoking um, but they still want to trade with us um, evidently they can't get agriculture from anywhere else I still find it hard to believe we've got 85% war justification towards the UK I don't know what they've done to us to provoke us so much Colombia are getting annoyed with us, which is kind of good. 
Um, Ecuador over here. Well, we don't need to worry about them just yet. It's probably our next wave of wars. Uh, okay, so it's all going all right, really. Um, we're provoking countries, getting ready to go to war. Our military is slowly building itself up. Let's show some trading just at the end of the episode here because I'm conscious of time. But um, let's just show, for example, so if we go to China, they pay us 418 million for 200 million. Let's see how much they pay us for 300 because you do get caps and kind of diminishing returns. So you see that's not quite double. So four, 576 is probably, yeah, is their max. So what you want to do in that circumstance is kind of look and see roughly what price you'll get 476 for. So that, sorry, 576, that was their cap. So that's more or less it. Um, it's a good price, so roughly double that, 275 million times by two is about four five hundred and fifty yeah five hundred and fifty um so we're making just over a hundred percent profit margin so that's good it's a fair amount to sell it's quite nice so that's good we'll sell that um germany also need um large amounts of consumer goods so let's just see what profit margins are offering us at 100 nice and this is a function of the fact they now have they basically they now have the soviet um a large chunk of the soviet union to supply and that means they've got massive demand for consumer goods and they're also um increasingly rich so let's just see if we have to do that See, that's not quite double anymore. So let's have a look at about the 200 million range. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So 200 million and we sell it for 552 million. So that is, um, I mean, it's not quite three times. It's not, you know, 200 million, 100% profit is 400 million. 200% profit would be 600 million. So we're not that far off 200, you know, which is just brilliant. So that's why we've had to start trading with Germany again. Um, let's see about oil. Yeah, they're willing to pay us loads for oil as well. Um, we don't want to sell it all to, all to Germany because um, we need to keep some of our other allies happy with us look at that profit margin on we might even see if we can sell and let's wait for that deal to go through actually um, let's just give that a day see what's sold and what isn't so Italy's trade's gone through China's trade's gone through. Germany's trade's gone through for oil. They may not come through with, yeah, they often do that. They offer this amazing price on consumer goods and then they reject it. Let's, um, let's go back to them and try it again. Still very good margins, so let's try that. There we go, that's successful. Um, so what we've got left of consumer goods, which is still a fair amount. Let's see if we can set it to the Italians. 
and so you'll notice over time so I'm, I'm normally going 100 million just because it makes it easier for me to see the margins you'll notice the quantity is dropping over time as the price goes up just from worldwide inflation in general um, Yeah, still 92% margin. Did we sell China any or um, any petrol? I'm not sure we did. I sell China some petrol. Yeah, over 100% profit margin there now as well. Get rid of that one as Germany rejected it. So there we go, made a nice chunk of money there, selling off the goods we'd built up over the course of the episode while it was in flight. Um, we may even see if we can... Do we need more military goods at the moment? No, we've got loads, but it doesn't hurt to take them while they're on offer cheap. And this is just building up our stockpile for no, they don't want to sell us those yet but they may over time as they get a critical mass you know as they get even more they normally get to a point where they sell it to us below cost at that point we want to have some consumer goods and oil built up to sell them and take a lot of the money back while they're very cash rich um, that was the uh, the little tactic we used with Germany at the start of this episode um, So I think we will probably wrap this episode there because um, it's getting a bit long now. Um, but that's been a bit more about the military build-up, about um, uh, looking at different units' um, statistics, understanding a bit about what they mean. Um, and, yeah, probably when we come back next time, we may well be about to declare war. I think it probably depends on what's gone on because I kind of filmed this episode purely because I wanted to talk about Mexico falling and about um, our trading strategies and how those were um, working out and benefiting us. Okay, so let's... Um, ah, there's our first Marines who can have a very slow walk down to there. Okay, so we will wrap that episode there. Um, any questions, comments? Uh, who's the oh, US has gone to war with Cuba. Okay, well, Cuba ain't going to last very long either, is it? That's because they've gone now. Uh, possibly because they've gone Axis or Axis lean. You do get this actually as the US stomps through countries, they all start to go. Um, Axis because they're trying to look to somebody, anyone who can help them against the US, knowing they're massively outmatched. Um, okay, uh, we'll wrap that there. Uh, thank you as always for watching. I've been Lukey P, and I will see you again soon.